Merry Christmas. I've been waiting for you. The Wrestling Life. You get a show, try to do this every now and then. And I'll let his gentlemen performing her holiday classic for us, our good dear friend, Darlene Love. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life, it's episode 358. Oh, it's uh, towards the end of December 2023 now. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. Welcome, Crab fans, and so much we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. You know, after uh, all these years, it's uh, rewarding to say that we're still the first and only wrestling podcast that's right you know some weeks you wish there was someone else to to carry the burden but uh uh, no no challengers have emerged (laughs) that's that's exactly right um so typically i think what we would normally do here would be our last uh regular show of the year and then the next two weeks would be uh, evergreen programming. One would be like a, a your polls show where mm-hmm. I just sit here and go, hmm. Yeah. Yes. Your favorite show of the year. Yes. And then the other would be, I don't know, we'd have to do homework of some kind. But mm-hmm. this year, AEW has gifted us <laughs> a wonderful variety show on <laughs> pay-per-view on December 30th this year. So what we're going to do is next week, we're going to do a show. We're going to do a show previewing uh, AEW World's End. And uh, WWE is, I think, going to be in reruns next week. So Mm -hmm. probably not a whole lot of new WWE talk there. But maybe some World's End previewing, some New Japan Wrestle Kingdom previewing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the following week will be the polls show. And then the week after that uh, is our rest day. <laughs> That's so right. We'll begin the year with uh, with a nice vacation. Yeah. I, so I think last year we did like a recap the news episode as one of our last shows of the year. Yeah. But if you look at it this year, er, one, it other than the, the gift that keeps on giving CM Punk, uh, a lot of depressing stuff happened. <laughs> Like there's no there's no fun riffs off of like Jay Briscoe dying or Vince forcing himself back into the company. I mean, that was kind of funny, but, uh, you know, and and, you know, forcing a sale uh, to <laughs> to punish his daughter for for uh, cooing him. Yes. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, it doesn't have the same. Uh, there weren't as many kind of wacky, funny things. I feel like it was more either straightforward things like there was a merger and, you know, the rights fees changed and all that, or it was, you know, sad, depressing stuff. So yes, instead we get to talk about uh, AEW world's end, but that's next week. And uh, we still got a show to do this week. So this week, uh, WWE has not gone on hiatus for the holidays yet. They still have a uh, Friday. Wait a minute. Actually they have, (laughs) they have uh, (laughs) the, They have a taped SmackDown on Friday this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was taped last week. Um, so they, they're on holiday hiatus. And as far as interesting things that happened on WWE television over the past week on SmackDown, Roman Reigns uh, uh, came back. Showed up to work. He he showed up. And AJ Styles showed up also. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have... Uh, a uh, there's going to be a match now between uh, Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and LA Knight, and the winner will face Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. And uh, that's kind of the top uh, program there on SmackDown and on Raw. Uh, nothing much happened. <laughs> there, uh, they did this was that was kind of their go home show for the big uh, January one Raw because it's there's no show next week so. Which they still haven't announced yet, by the way. They have <laughs> they have just not said 
we're not doing a new show on uh, Christmas night, even though they're very clearly not doing a new show on Christmas night. They just they're just going to, I guess, hope that one point five million people still tune in on uh, on Christmas night to watch, I guess. Yeah, but to your point, yes, that was the go home show. And uh, Seth and Drew did some stuff that uh, people seem to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Rhea Ripley's going to defend her title against Ivy Nile on that show on New Year's Day. And uh, Becky Lynch will face Nia Jax. And then the new number one contenders uh, for the women's tag team titles will be decided. Uh, The women's tag titles did change hands. As uh, Katana Chance and Caden Carter, the two most normally named women in the company, uh, won the re- the women's tag titles on Raw. So that's kind of the Raw stuff there. That's right. Uh, Katana, congrats to uh, uh, one of my favorite wrestlers, Katana Chance. Uh, I say one of my favorite wrestlers based on that one promo she did when they first renamed her in NXT, where she, in the most wooden and unbelievable manner possible, stated that she liked to shoot back straight whiskey and let loose. Yes. Um, Shake a little, shake a little something. That's right. (laughs) It's an all time promo. It's incredible. (laughs) Like I'm not even like, I'm not even like, it it feels like I'm making fun of her and I kind of am, but like, I genuinely get a great deal of joy from that promo. Uh, How can you not? Yes. It's incredible. So uh, yeah, good. Look, Dave, both of them have been around like Katana Chance retired for like six months and then came back and Caden's been or bouncing around the performance center for years before they finally both got called up. So yeah. Hey, nice, nice moment for them. And uh, yeah, that was like, that was, that was your only title change. It was, yeah, it was, like I said, it was mostly just some really, really simple basic stuff to set up your, your big matches on that show. Your, uh, your Drew, Seth, your Becky, Naya, and your uh, Cody, Cody Nakamura. So they they haven't officially announced Cody Nakamura yet, but it's very clear they're doing another match and very soon. Right. So maybe maybe they hold that off for yeah, another... or maybe they're just waiting to announce it. <laughs> Could be because sometimes <laughs> they do well, that. Every wrestling company now will just instead of announcing it on your show, oh, they'll you'll just announce it on. Twitter like three hours before the show goes on the air. Right. It's a strategy. <laughs> sure. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was fun. I guess the, the yeah, the big noteworthy stuff was on the SmackDown the Friday before with AJ and boy, AJ is uh, he's really been uh, been hitting that uh, steamed chicken and broccoli diet. Huh? He um, let me just ask a completely unrelated question. Mm-hmm. Last week on this program, you said that Kenny Omega was, quote, too much of a nerd to do drugs, unquote. That's true. Do I you did. think AJ Styles is too much of a nerd to do drugs? Well, as uh, as as we found out at hours seemingly after <laughs> we recorded our show last week in a throwback to something that used to happen all the time, which is the big news breaking after we record. Yeah. Uh, Kenny was on drugs because he was in uh, <laughs> severe pain due to a bout of diverticulitis he was dealing with. Um, so uh, I was wrong. <laughs> Kenny was not too much of a nerd to do drugs and then go on live TV. So I think uh, I, I think my my nerd radar might be off. <laughs> I think maybe AJ is cool enough to do steroids. <laughs> it's uh, that's fine. Yeah. So um, all that stuff with the uh, he came back and he uh, attacked L.A. Knight, but mm-hmm. did not attack Randy and uh, also gave Roman the forearm. Correct. Yeah. So it set up some weird stuff and uh, he'll be um, he wrestles, I think, solo Sokoa on the tape smackdown this week, at, but at least to a schmaz. Anyway, it's all setting up the New Year's Revolution episode of Smackdown, which I assume is the first week of January. And um, they will. uh yeah, that that's where the uh, the three way will take place uh, to set up Roman's challenger for the Royal Rumble, which is totally fine. I don't mean to uh, digress here, but I'm going to digress. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm legitimately I'm I'm not uh, making fun of of Caden and Katana here. <laughs> um, remember, I think it was at a Raw, I went, the Raw in Baltimore I went to this summer, where remember that um, the. Uh, uh, Katana stood on Caden's shoulders and did like a uh, assisted 630 or something. 
I do. Yes, I do remember her doing something absolutely insane. Yeah, a random raw tag <laughs> match. Yes, uh, they're very fun. They've toned that down a little bit, but they still do some weird uh, tandem flippy things that no one else does. So it's legitimately a fun time when they wrestle. Yeah, like you, you wish they had more teams to work with. <laughs> yes. Um, the- their next challengers will be one of two also ran teams, Tegan and Natalia or Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Right. So, I mean, none of those people are bad wrestlers. No, not at but, all. Uh, yeah. You you wish there was a little bit more meat on the bone for some of these women's tag teams. But yes, they, to your credit, they are, they have a fun, high energy. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're the modern day rockers. <laughs> Perhaps slightly <laughs> less cocaine. Uh, and probably equal amounts of whiskey. If, exactly. If their promos are to be taken seriously. <laughs> uh, um, LA Knight also is going to be receiving the uh, key to the city of Hagerstown, Maryland this week. What? Why did I not know he was from Hagerstown until this week? I don't know. I, I somehow knew that. I'm sure yeah, you've probably told me that. I guess it just yes. went, went, went one in, went in one ear and out the other, but Somehow I completely missed I have, the he's a have, Maryland boy. I have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> I've introduced myself to the same person countless times. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ethan. We've met 12 times before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just to be a completely anonymous human being is, is my cross to bear. That's sure. fine. You could also be an excellent hit man. That means... <laughs> I think I need to consider all career paths for 2024. <laughs> I, I really do. Hey, I'm just saying, don't <laughs> turn it into a skill. Look, man, all I know is I uh, am, am going to Bel Air, Maryland for Christmas. And uh, both of the head honchos of the website that I work to went to Hawaii for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. So I think I should everything... All career choices should be on the ca- on the table for 2024. Agreed. All righty. Um, Charlotte Flair and Bailey have re-signed with WWE. Mm-hmm. Long-term contract. Charlotte Flair's deal supposedly uh, among the largest they've ever given a gasp woman before. <laughs> like, like one raising on that was very funny. One, duh, of course. Mm-hmm. Two. Well, who could possibly have had a bigger contract at any point? Becky Lynch? <laughs> right. I mean... That's it. That's the only one. Right. And it's like, and then uh, the word is that um, Mercedes money slash, slash Sasha Banks, um, her asking price to come back was higher than what Charlotte just signed for. Wow. So, so I don't know what that number is. I'm guessing it's over $2 million a year and a bus. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Uh, Because uh, Charlotte. Well, well, we know Charlotte got a bus. We don't have a dollar figure, but I'm just. Educated guessing saying Charlotte's getting over two million dollars a year and a bus. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. I mean, it, it is funny because I saw people like Mercedes brings out a certain weird weirdo. How dare you? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> but like people that don't like her specifically and people were like very mad at the idea that she might have asked for more money than Charlotte just got. Right. Um, and I was just like, well, isn't this kind of like how there was a very brief time in history, in the history of the NFL where Joe Flacco was the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. Correct. And then like two months later, Aaron Rodgers signed an extension and it was even bigger. Correct. So like, this is just, this is the going rate for the industry currently. So Charlotte's going to get paid. Bailey probably (laughs) just get paid. Becky's deals up next year. She's going to probably bigger star than either Bailey or Charlotte. I, you would assume she's going to get even more money. Um, so like this is this is the going rate for the industry, and if you're not asking more, especially right now, her price should go. I mean, Mercedes price should go up even higher because Charlotte is also now apparently out for nine months, as we chatted about last week of what 
what WrestleMania would look like if they couldn't do Bianca versus Charlotte. But right. boy, getting to plug in a Mercedes into that spot sure sounds like a a good uh, a good stopgap measure to get you to a big WrestleMania, big marquee WrestleMania match and rematch. You know them getting to have a big match in front of you know an entire full stadium this time uh would be you know so that's so why wouldn't she ask for it <laughs> also it's negotiation like right right uh the eventually like the um uh the, the bit part on the the mandalorian is not going to be there and yes. the uh doing independent movies is not going to be there and the being able to charge whatever you want on the convention circuit is not going to be there. Sure. And um, but and, until like she has incredible leverage and no one else has. It's like everybody. Becky has leverage, too, because she and Seth are up in June, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like. If you have a lever, of course, as you must, it's a negotiation. It's a starting point. It's a discussion. You have a discussion. Yeah. It's not an unreasonable person. <laughs> it's just, yeah. People look, people get especially weird. There are certain people across the time we have done this show where the people that do not like them just have a little extra venom. It's <laughs> behind their it, words. And Mercedes is one. <laughs> I think Brandy Rhodes is one. It's uh, it's and, fascinating, and isn't you it? Think Nia Jax is one, <laughs> I think. Wow, there's a what do all these women have in common? Hmm, hard to say. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a coincidence, but yes, there are certain people that just make people lose their effing minds. Uh, so and Mercedes is one of those. But I saw that I was like, yeah, of course, she's in a great position to negotiate, and why wouldn't she ask for? something a comparable offer to what somebody else just got and don't you have to pay the fu tax also yes <laughs> considering that uh you separated from one another after you, the the weird old man wanted him to do a job with no build mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, okay she walked out you buried their her you buried her in trinity on the way out mm-hmm. it's like well not only do you have to pay me you also have to pay the fu tax to get me to come back. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> that's what that. I'm totally fine with all of that. No problems with that whatsoever. Um. So, yeah. Um. Uh, I know we don't talk about ratings, but uh, Raw did its second best number of uh, the NFL season this week, mm-hmm. and SmackDown was down from the week before, even though Roman Reigns is on the show. So weird update your uh observer award wrestler of the year <laughs> i guess so i guess so cody's ex- show, Cody show wasn't down uh that's right maybe you know they didn't make it clear that punk wasn't going to be on raw mm-hmm. but i think if you paid attention you knew he wasn't going to be on raw <laughs> right um anyway nxt did not do well this week and the numbers and they're doing some kind of they did a tape show also and they're doing a weird uh rehash of the Shawn michaels fake concussion angle mm-hmm. uh only in this storyline a uh, ridge holland injured uh nxt's uh Ilya dragunov mm-hmm. and um uh ridge holland of course is responsible for responsible for is probably the wrong way to put that He's the guy that gave Biggie a suplex on the floor when Biggie broke his neck. Correct. And he allegedly hurt one of the uh, the, the pretty deadly boys also. Uh, whichever Elton print, I think Kit Wilson was the one who was hurt, mm-hmm. who missed a few months with uh, with a shoulder injury. Uh, so he's gotten a bit of a reputation as being a bit of a stiff guy. And uh, so now they've just uh, they've turned that into a storyline. And uh, that seems like a really bad idea and a really bad idea to brand uh, Rich Holland as the unsafe guy. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's weird. This is a very WCW thing to do, um, in my opinion, because it's like, well, he in the in storyline where this is real, right? Of course, he's trying to hurt these people. He's right. not trying to kill them, right? But like he threw, you know, he, he gave the guy a throw and he landed weird. He's not trying to throw him in such a way that he lands perfectly on his back and takes a safe bump. 
so I don't I don't get what this does other than I mean it was done on a tape show so we had like maybe a day where people thought it could be real before everyone realized that it was just an angle but yeah I don't know I just like I said I I I was on the show last week advocating for people sticking sticking their thumb in Brian Danielson's uh, surgery wound so I'm yes. I am I am without a uh, <laughs> a leg to stand on as I'm not I'm not telling anyone not to do this my right. point is just like Within within the fictional world of professional wrestling and NXT, uh, what has Ridge done wrong? <laughs> right, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make a guy sense. a wrestling move and the guy got hurt. It's it's an athletic sport theoretically. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So not a super exciting uh, NXT this week. Um. Let us see. AEW. Well, AEW, there's always a lot going on in all elite wrestling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Continental Classic uh, Gold League finals are set up for next week. Uh, John Moxley, Jay White, and Swerve Strickland all tied. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a six-man block, and we have a three-way tie at the top. Um, I, I don't know why we did this. <laughs> I mean, I... I can... So I have two thoughts. All right. One is um, you really shouldn't do something like this until the tournament has been around for like five years. Sure. Uh, and the second reason is I think it's because they didn't want to pin Swerve twice, but also didn't want him to win the tournament. So I think it's there so that Moxley can pin Jay White next week. <laughs> well, then... Because okay. if, if okay, Moxley we're, had won, we're, right. then yeah. it would have been it would have been Moxley and Swerve in the finals again. Yeah, I get and it. And he would have okay. had to beat Swerve. That's okay. my guess. Now we could go back to a point we visited a few weeks ago, which is you didn't have to put Swerve in the tournament. You didn't have to do any of this because wrestling is fake, and you can do whatever you want. Um, so I don't excuse. So I don't really accept that as an excuse. I don't excuse they didn't want to beat a, either guy as a good excuse for anything, but I think that's why. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Yeah, that makes sense. I hadn't uh, gone through all the permutations there and, uh, and realized what was going on, but yeah, that makes sense. I suppose. Um, um, I guess start. uh, I don't know chronologically what order of things happen in here. Uh, Thunder Rosa came back on collision. Mm-hmm. Um, she'll be coming back on uh, this week's collision, I think, which mm-hmm. is in San Antonio. Uh, Thunder Rosa, the uh, vice captain of the Zoe Stark All Stars. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided it's uh, Zoe Stark. The Zoe Stark All Stars is a is a team, a squad. Mm-hmm. Um, that consists of Zoe Stark, uh, Thunder Rosa, and uh, the blonde lady from uh, Ted Lasso. I think her <laughs> name's uh, Hannah Waddingham, I think is her name. Okay. Anyway, those are the Zoe Stark All-Stars. <laughs> I will not explain further. I think I know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not going to... We'll... <laughs> we'll leave it up to the we'll listener. You can... You can... Google those three people and uh, let me know what you think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. So Thunder Rosa came back. Uh, Sky. Smile. Yep. Yep. Sky Blue uh, is now Sky Black. <laughs> She's still Sky Blue. Uh, they somehow turned Sky Blue and Julia Hart into uh, goth heels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sure. Why not? Like, well, I, don't know. I mean, to be fair, uh, Julia is probably the set the first maybe the second most over woman in that whole com- company right now so besides chris and tony i would yeah. say yes okay. she's third. third but people people are into that act so i mean sky blue being like I, sky blue was like the which armstrong was it that was just kind of around to lose brad <laughs> yeah brad constantly on television and just getting beat all the time. 
Yes. Um, so, okay, you're going to try to give her something to see if you can develop her into a better rounded performer, I suppose. I don't know. It's not It's not what I would do, but it. Oh, I also wouldn't have necessarily thought goth Julia Hart would be like a successful act. And now she's like the by far the biggest star in that whole group that she's in. So, yeah. Um, maybe maybe this will this will work for Sky for Sky Blue too. I don't know, but I did get a kick out of uh, Thunder Rosa and Abaddon doing the Mega Powers handshake. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. Abaddon and Thunder Rosa, what a team! <laughs> That's tremendous. Uh, Christian Cage is going to respond to uh, your guy, your boy Adam uh mm-hmm. adam copeland challenged christian to a no dq match uh for the pay-per-view next week and uh christian will give his answer on uh saturday's collision show uh he had uh tony Schiavone read a, a a proclamation on dynamite this week dynamite this week oh boy <laughs> oh boy it was not as uh as um as stark of a uh, wonderful variety show as it has been in weeks past mm. because you had the the continental classic matches there right but there's still a lot of sports entertainment on wednesday nights and uh to mixed results so what did you think of dynamite this week yeah that's uh again like like the wrestling really like the uh, swerve and roosh what side sidebar Roosh yeah. being the least like being just like the most easygoing guy, like come of all the signees of the last couple of years of all elite wrestling. If anyone was thought to be a problem child coming in, it was Roosh. And this guy just I mean, he'll he likes to kick out at three a fair yeah. amount. He likes to do the triple yeah. H thing. Sure. But he'll do the jobs. Like he's he doesn't seem to be uh <laughs> The he seems to be the least of uh, of Tony Comp's problems when it comes to uh, uh, guys guys who don't like doing no jobs. So there, there is the one time where he beat the shit out of Jungle Boy, but as it turns out, maybe Jungle Boy deserved it. <laughs> um, no, and like that was the story of the match was right. Jungle Boy was going to take a beating, but come on, come out on top in the end. I'm not saying Roosh was unprofessional in any way. Right. I'm just saying he was going to he lost that match, but he was going to get his before oh, he yeah. lost. <laughs> yeah, but to your point, yeah, it's, he hasn't uh, had a, a boo boo face when it's come time to do any jobs here in this tournament, and he's done quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, yeah, I liked I liked the wrestling on the show. I uh, thought it was good. Good. Uh, really enjoyed the the Mark Mark Briscoe and uh, and Jay Lethal match. I thought that was that was a fun. Like uh, I thought we could have canceled that one. <laughs> well, I like I like seeing Mark get his win, but it's that's fine. It was it was the least important match because they both had no points coming in. But yes. <laughs> um but yes it was uh but yeah i thought overall wrestling wrestling across the show was good the maxwell friedman variety hour uh less 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 good bad so, i would so say so mjf and samoa joe were uh speaking at one another uh samoa joe is a very compelling uh television character he's has a he does voiceover work he has a strong good promo voice mm-hmm. uh he's a very compelling speaker and so he and Max are kind of going back and forth about uh, their match because it's coming up on the pay per view, and then uh, they're interrupted by uh, uh, the lights going out and uh, spookiness, and mm-hmm. um, they're attacked by masked henchmen who they fight off, and then they're the devil uh, challenged MJF to put his ROH tag titles on the line next week, presumably on Dynamite, but never explicitly said. Uh, and Joe is going to step up and uh, for the second time defend those titles with MJF because Adam Cole is still injured. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's the other thing. And between that segment and then the Roddy Strong uh, post-match promo and then the backstage segment, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing a lot of uh, who's the devil. Right. And uh uh, Max accuses Joe of being the devil because he didn't help him or save him from getting beat down. 
And Joe accuses Max of being the devil because, well, we didn't actually see you get beat up. We just saw you laying on the ground. And then, you know, Hangman Page got beat up the next week. Right. And then, you know, uh, uh, Roddy keeps saying it's the devil. Uh, Max is the devil. And right. it's a it's a it's part of his 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 wonderful act where he uh, shouts everyone's name. Yes. I need Not to- just Adam Cole's name anymore. He screams everyone's name. And uh, yeah, not just Adam Cole's name anymore. He uh, he he shouts everyone's name and he says Max is the devil. And then we got our, our latest bit of intrigue, which was we got for the first time, as far as I know, first time ever in this company, uh, we got a face off between MJF and Swerve. And uh, because Max finds a ski mask in front of Swerve's door. And uh, and so he thinks that maybe Swerve is the devil. So they had their little face off seemingly setting a seed for something after the pay-per-view. Um, and yeah, so they're trying to make you care about who the devil is, but um, it's, I, it's, I don't, I don't care. And it's been going on too long. And it's, yeah. And it's a, how many un? someone was like, how many unmasking angles have been good? Cause in my head, I'm like black scorpion. Terrible. Right. Uh, DDP as the stalker of Undertaker's Terrible. wife. One Terrible. of the worst things. One of the most like promotional malpractice angles ever. Right. Uh, Vince is the higher power. Funny for meme purposes. Didn't make a lot of sense at the time. No. Hugely disappointing at the time. Um, so uh, the time Dean Malenko unmasks as c That was good. And uh, and beats up Jericho and WCW. That was that that was a one night angle or one right. night. That angle. wasn't that wasn't a who's who is it, right? So I really can't tell you a lot of like who's behind the mask angles in uh, the the raw general manager, which never never had a reveal. Correct. Um. So like, there's never there's very few uh masked man angles and brutus beefcake taking out hulk hogan leading to a brutus beefcake hulk hogan starcade main event there are yeah. no good masked man angles i guess is what i'm getting at yeah yeah no argument there uh yeah so we'll see how that plays out and they still i who knows when this thing's ever gonna pay off if it if like, it's ever like, gonna pay off like god you'd hope it would be at world's end but who knows? Do you, have, do you have no idea? No, we have no idea. Uh, so MJF and Joe will then uh, they'll team up on on Dynamite next week. Um, are they defending it against masked devil guys? Presumably, that's okay. that's the conclusion you would come to after watching that segment. But they never explicitly said because it's okay. AEW and they under explain everything. Sure, I mean that's I mean you would guess since the devil made the challenge. I can I can, uh, but it's like okay, so assuming. As we, <laughs> I've assumed for the start, this is Adam Cole, and right. therefore it'll be Roddy and Kyle uh, at some point under these masks, and probably Wardlow as well, and maybe Jack Perry or whoever else. Anyone that hates that's feuded with MJF on screen, I guess, is an option. But they keep having Wardlow cut these promos about how the end is coming from MJF and stuff. So, yeah, he could be in there too. But it's like, in the meantime, uh, he's just got to fight generic guy. It's very oh, it's so TNA. Like TNA literally did this with the with the damn aces and eights, where yes. like Bubba Ray and and Bobby Roode or whoever are fighting like guys in leather vests and ski masks. Yeah, it sucked. Then there's another there's another unmasking angle that never went anywhere. So yeah, yeah, sucks, sucks. Sucks just, and it's been going on forever. Yeah. And also just just maybe any of this would be less annoying if it wasn't the main character focal point world champion of your show. Correct. Um do you know anyone who's a bigger Tony Storm fan or historically has been a bigger Tony Storm fan than me <laughs> over the last six years? I mean, there's a few uh, uh accounts that uh, pop up on the for you page, which are just devoted uh, specifically to posting pictures of wrestlers, uh, lady wrestlers, butts. Huh. They seem to be bigger fans than you. 
Okay. But that's that's a short list. That's that's tough. Other than fair. the pervert accounts, uh, sure. I can't name many bigger Tony Storm fans that I personally am aware of than you. All right. Thank you for that. Um, the uh, timeless Tony Storm thing is. Uh, uh, I'm I'm kind of over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. It's also um very funny in small doses, and uh, mm-hmm. the doses keep getting larger. <laughs> yes, they have her on commentary. Uh, yes, for the women's matches every week now. Correct. Um, and she does have some funny lines. Um, yes, referring to Taz as the human duplex machine. I thought it was. Yes. Just- genuinely really funny um and taz remarking how luther's head is so big they can't get him in the frame also very yeah. funny yeah taz talking for like 30 seconds about man his head's so fat why we can't get him in the shot very funny um but yeah the the thing is like eventually the bell has to ring and she is a very good wrestler but now she has to do shtick while right. wrestling correct and that is a. Uh, uh, that doesn't that, that is antithetical to her style, which is like very fast paced, hard hitting, strong style wrestling. And yeah. now she has to do a little song and dance. Also, is she like comedy heel? Um, there's definitely comedy heel vibes. Mm-hmm. But so then do you wrestle like a comedy heel or do you wrestle like a baby face? We don't really know. And now she'll she'll be wrestling Riho like one of the five great baby faces in ring in wrestling Mm -hmm. (laughs) at the pay-per-view. Ordinarily, I would say, wow, that match is going to be great. I don't know what the match is going to (laughs) be. Yeah, like the the Sheeta match was uh, like 50% very good wrestling match and 50% shtick. Yeah. So I would expect more of that with the uh, with the Riho match here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like Rio matches are always fun because every, even this one with Soraya she had on Wednesday was fun because like when Soraya ever got to play giant before in a match. Right. That's that's like the inherent fun of Rio matches. So this could be fun with her and Tony, but I feel like it would have been a better actual match like six months ago. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, for their pay-per-view coming up next week, we have MJF and Samoa Joe, and we know MJF is hurt, mm-hmm. uh, but it doesn't look like he's going to be dropping uh, the title anytime soon since he's feuding with number a number of other people on the roster. Mm-hmm. There is the women's title match with Tony and Riho. There is a tag team title match is announced but we don't know if omega is going to be healed from diverticulitis by the time that happens mm-hmm. um and they don't either so they just had chris jericho do a very dull baby face promo that he was retweeting retweeting praise for all night on <laughs> uh on wednesday and uh and then the continental classic finals so that's what we know uh here uh, about a week out from that pay- and uh, Edge and uh, Christian in a uh, no DQ match. Sure. <laughs> I mean, wh- wise of them to not try a ladder match at the stage, I think. Shows great restraint, which is not something that they that <laughs> company usually does at all. So they had Jeff jumping off the biggest ladder you ever saw like two weeks into his uh, his arrival in this company. So uh, at least Adam and Adam and uh, and Christian had a uh, a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more leeway. I'm sure it'll still be violent and whatever, but hey, it's people people like Edge. I and I really enjoy uh, Christian's shtick, and I think his matches are actually still pretty good too. Um, and I didn't dislike the match they had in Montreal, but um, uh, nobody cared about that match, and uh, the rating reflected that. So. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we just, maybe we just blow this off here and, uh, we all move on with our lives, huh? Seems unlikely to me, but sure. <laughs> oh, we, we still haven't really gotten a confirmation of whether Nick Wayne's mom, uh, one of the chief protagonists of AEW, Nick Wayne's mom is a, is a heel now, or if she was simply retaliating at Adam Copeland for, uh, trying to kill her son like the week before. Yeah, I thought maybe I 
Um, full disclosure, I uh, was watching the NFL on Saturday night, and I watched uh, Collision after the NFL games were over. And I thought, and I was only like 60% paying attention mm-hmm. to the show, and I thought, did I miss, like, did they address Shayna Wayne here, and I just missed it? And then, uh, no, as it turns no. out. <laughs> it turns out, no, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Right, you would you would think Christian will perhaps address that on uh, on collision this week, but as of now, it has not been addressed that a civilian yes. walked, walked into the ring and attacked uh, Adam Adam Copeland and cost him the TNT Championship. But yeah, uh, you know, there's always the next show. Maybe they'll get around to it there, or they could just drop it, which might be might honestly be the best idea. Sure. Uh, so I would, uh, I would just like to add, someone told me, uh, Conan's a family guy. No, they told me that Shane Wayne is very nice. I'm sure she is. (laughs) That sounds lascivious. I didn't mean it to. I'm sure (laughs) I genuinely have no doubt that she's a very nice person. No, I heard she was like super nice. Uh Uh-huh. What do you know? <laughs> what do you know? And like what and like what on earth like a what on earth is she doing in the, in an angle because she's so nice kind of thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like wow, okay. <laughs> Never thought that person would do an angle. She's way too nice for this business. <laughs> huh? That's... It's like, I mean, look, if 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 we got we got Sean's wife to come back and do an angle that it's one true. time. So true it was a great angle too man that's one of the best ever yeah all right so that's uh new japan has their uh final show before the tokyo dome this weekend uh mass tours has come back there's much rejoicing in cork and hall no one else got us we know matt mass tours got us correct um taichi is your final kick pro wrestling of 2023 god bless <laughs> and uh well, that very prestigious championship can only hope that continues into 2024. And uh, I guess this is probably this feels like a week old at this point. But speaking of uh, New Japan, uh, Okada is uh, is a free agent entertaining outside offers. Mm-hmm. He'll be a free agent, I guess, at the end of January. And he's entertaining uh, outside offers and apparently has hired an American uh, agent, Barry Bloom, who is rep. Is represented a lot of guys over the years. Mm-hmm. Represents Jim Ross. Um, is he did he just do Osprey? Like, like isn't he Osprey's guy too? He, uh that would make sense. I honestly don't know, but that would make sense. Um, uh, so I think anyone freaking out about uh, Okada to to WWE, I think a thousand percent. There's a one thousand percent chance that the thing is Okada signs with AEW and still works major New Japan dates, right? right. <laughs> it would be like earth shatteringly weird <laughs> for him to sign with with WWE, unless there was like a dramatic falling out between him and management in New Japan that we're just not privy to. Um, but could he take the deal that Osprey just did, where? Hey, I'll sign here and I'll work. I'll work the shows, and then I'll still come back and work all the big New Japan shows that I could see. It, it almost it would it would be like it would be like maybe a seventy thirty split. In he would work seventy percent dates for New Japan and thirty percent AEW dates or something. It would be less. Um, he would be in AEW less than Osprey is going to be. Right. Because he wants to live in Japan. Supposedly his family is a young family in Japan. It's like, is he going to come over here and start making towns? <laughs> like, <laughs> is he going to fly from uh, Tokyo to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas every week? <laughs> it's like, no, not every week. Why no. would you do that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's that's that would be insane. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think I I could definitely see him being a more more of a regular, maybe working, yeah. you know, I don't know the the, well, big, the big pay per view shows like your double or nothings and all outs and, and all ins and all of that. One one day a month for AEW sounds about right to me. Sure. And at that point, do you trust that they 
people plan things out far enough in advance to get Okada's dates together a month ahead of time. It's good. It would require a great deal of infrastructure and communication on yes. both companies' parts to to work that out. Yeah, but I still think anyway. I I'm not exactly uh, breaking news here, but I think the, the by far the most likely scenario is he stays with New Japan and AEW. I I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's rocket science. All right, um, Matt Riddle's also going back to MLW. God bless. <laughs> well, it was either there or the NWA or where, where's Tessa work now? XPW. Um, uh, I think Tessa works. I think she's sh- shoot in like the Army National Guard or something. Oh. But also, yes, she works uh indies that will uh that will ha- have her. <laughs> Uh, Mustafa Ali uh, announced a uh, indie tour. He's doing, for... yeah, he's doing the the blitz. He's doing the get booked everywhere right away. Let's get some buzz going. Uh, run right away. So that's, I mean, that's a blueprint that Cody, you know, followed, and it worked out really well for him. So you just get your name, and you just work everywhere, and you don't price yourself out of anywhere right, right. away you yeah. can, you can work and make a lot of money and also kind of improve your standing in a lot of people's eyes very quickly so uh good for him he's he also oh very clearly with that little vignette he put out clearly wants it to be i'm not just coming to be a work rate guy on the indies like he he clearly wants to show that he could this character that he was trying to do in wwe for like three years he he wants he wants to show that that could that could work. So good luck to him. I do wish him luck. I think he's a very nice guy. I think he's a very good wrestler. We were talking on the show about the time when I started beating the drum for Tony Storm when Mustafa Ali was just on Two Hundred Five Live. I was like, this guy's one of the two best guys in the company. Uh, so long time we're on the record. Long time Mustafa Ali fans. Mm-hmm. Um, his ideas are are terrible. <laughs> Maybe the only thing worse than WWE creatives ideas for Mustafa Ali are Mustafa Ali's ideas for Mustafa Ali. <laughs> I just uh, I, yeah. I don't I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to work out for him. But no, look, I, like I said, I, I appreciate he was he went with a a personality vignette. I appreciate that he's trying. But yes. um, it's just, also, it's sometimes you just if you're a good wrestler and you're just like a nice, likable person that can get you pretty far. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe that's that's the role to play into is that you're just a nice, hardworking fella. But again, he obviously has designs on on a on a grander plan. So good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, li- would like to congratulate the, the Hulkster who got baptized this week. That's right. And he's debuted a special white bandana for the occasion. Yes, one of his formal bandanas. He wears <laughs> a uh, a formal black bandana when he gets married and mm-hmm. is in court, <laughs> and now a formal white uh, bandana for religious ceremonies. So I honestly wish that guy nothing but the best. And uh, even though he retroactively ruined my childhood, uh, I wish him love and peace. Uh, only love. Mm-hmm. HH. HH. Um for the rest of his life. And it seems like his uh his new wife um is probably not just after him for his money, mm. uh, which we don't know how much he has anymore anyway. Right. But uh yeah, like the he got the Gawker him. settlement, but then he got divorced again. So and also how much did that Gawker settlement Gawker settlement ever got paid out? Right. We don't know. Um but yeah, so we definitely like to wish uh, the Hulkster the uh, uh, the best. Oh, you would. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's more I, than. <laughs> I don't yeah. wish him ill currently. <laughs> currently. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to press on that. I think I think <laughs> everyone's everyone's entitled to their thoughts and 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 opinions. And uh, yeah, God bless him. <laughs> 
Um, anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that about covers it. Uh, uh, oh, we should we should mention in, in wrapping up the uh, the newly released wrestlers. Uh, Nick Namath is is making towns in Puerto Rico. Uh, you know, Vince Vince really dealt Carlos a, <laughs> a tough blow when he took his boy, and uh, and uh, so he's sending one of his greatest superstars, <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, as a replacement to uh, to to work some spots down in down in Puerto Rico. <laughs> It's an absolutely tremendous bit. Absolutely tremendous bit. It takes uh, a lot of it has a lot of elements that I like. It has <laughs> the uh, Vince's senile element. Mm-hmm. And particularly when you pair this bit with like photos of him on a cell phone. <laughs> yes. When he was like doing stuff with Austin Theory on TV a year and a half mm-hmm. ago. It's like that was fun. Um <laughs> It's got that. It's got WWE or WWF slash uh, Carlos Cologne lore, <laughs> which is tremendous. Goes mm-hmm. back decades. Grill Monsoon, of course, owned a piece of the territory mm-hmm. and had a Puerto Rican love child. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that too. Uh, anytime you can. And anytime you get to refer to Gorilla Monsoon as Gino, mm-hmm. tremendous. Oh, uh, best. Vince thinking that Dolph still works for him. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, thinking that uh, knowing what his opinion of Dolph was and trying to sell him to car- <laughs> to another promoter as a top superstar. <laughs> also tremendous. <laughs> and also like the the twisted uh sense of uh loyalty and mm. uh morality that vince mcmahon the promoter had where he would like always want people to finish up whatever dates they had agreed to before they broke their contract to come <laughs> work for him uh-huh the uh yeah i know carlos that i hurt you when we took carlito back so i want to do you a solid to make <laughs> up for it it's like yeah well that's that's the that's the twisted vince mcmahon's promoter is uh ethics yeah that right <laughs> it's a great bit it's a great bit i hope everyone understands and appreciates it it's a good all right well uh everyone if you celebrate enjoy your christmas and uh we'll be back with a show next week once again as we preview the aew worlds and pay-per-view next week another new episode to wrap up 2023 uh until then and I mean, we'll be back soon with more stories from the rest of the life Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Darling love, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Schaefer. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. You know, Christmas is always my favorite time of year. And I'm glad you're here in my living room to enjoy it. <laughs> Mrs. Claus must have made the cocoa this year. <laughs> now, at Christmas time, we all have our favorite things, but mine is singing Christmas carols. My favorite Christmas carol, I'm a embarrassed, but it's the, the 12 days of Christmas. But I, I have something special for you because not only are we all going to do it together, I have the number one fan in the world of the Roddy Piper President Club. His name is Craig. Craig, come on in here. Hi, Hi, Mr. Rowdy. Piper, (laughs) Mr. Piper. Roddy, Roddy. Yeah, Roddy. You look great. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming. (laughs) Say hello. (laughs) Hi. Night, night. So what we're going to do is, is Grandma up? Okay, cool. Now, we're going to sing the 12 days of Christmas. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So, are you going to start us yeah. out? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, just one more time. Uh, you did that twice uh, in a row. That was good. Okay. Uh, 
On the first day of Christmas, Roddy Piper gave to me <laughs> a sleeper hole just for you. Got a hundred more of these. <laughs> On the second day of Christmas, Roddy Piper gave to me <laughs> two nipple twins. <laughs> That's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> and a sleeper hold for you. <laughs> Get up. Get up. You know, you know. Maybe we should just go to the end because Christmas will be gone by the time we get through the song and it's so much fun, okay? <laughs> so get Granny up and, and, and let here we go. We'll just start at 12. Oh. On the 12th day of Christmas, Roddy Piper gave to me 12 and lots, 11 kidney shots, 10 head butts, just relax, 9 elbow smashes, 8 uppercuts, 7 low blows, 6 close lines, 5 Three terror shots. <laughs> Two nipple twisties. <laughs> and a sleeper hold just for you. Merry Christmas. May all your dreams come true. Carlos, uh, it's a man. How you doing, pal? I'll send uh, Dolph down with Gino. Patterson. <laughs> Patterson, we need to play. <laughs> He's talking into a, a, like a, tel- a cordless phone from 1997. <laughs> it's not turned on. Right. <laughs> and he's just like, Patterson. <laughs> just, just give me Gino on the phone. I need the number for Puerto Rico. <laughs> Hey, Carlos. How's it going, pal? It's McMahon. <laughs> got, a, got a great opportunity for you. And if you're available, we'd love to have you come to work the garden next month. <laughs> <laughs> come and work the garden next month. And then I also like the other side where he's like constantly calling Ari Emanuel. <laughs> like, we've got to make this right. We've got to make this right with Carlos. <laughs> Yes. yes. He, he meant a great deal to my father, whom, yes, I personally <laughs> hated, but I have a great sense of loyalty to all of his friends anyway. <laughs> that I also put out of business. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I get a great deal of gratification by ruining someone's life and then offering them a job. <laughs> anyway, he's calling Ari Emanuel at 3 a.m. To <laughs> yes. <laughs> to tell them that he's sending Ziggler to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Ari Emanuel, who's like, shoot, one of the five most powerful people in entertainment. <laughs> he had to tell Vince, stop meddling with the television show. <laughs> he had to scold Vince to tell him to stop meddling with the TV shows. <laughs> like, Dude, you're an executive. Like, you're a very high ranking executive. Why are you going to TV <laughs> and tinkering with the script? <laughs> right. You freak. <laughs> Stop calling me at 3 a.m. <laughs> Who's Gino? <laughs> Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Here we are as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are near to us, 
and so dear to us once more. Through the years, we all will be together. If the allow you, hang a shining star on that high hill to keep us. I try to keep on keeping on.